fine merchandise and Christmas is coming up, but go ahead with your question. How do you honestly describe the evolution of Jim Cornette from first getting involved in pro wrestling, not necessarily the point where you were a fan, but the point where you first started really getting involved in it to per se right now? Um, well, the evolution is actually there. Was, the biggest evolution was a couple of years ago. I spent about 35 years in the, in the wrestling business. And then a couple of years ago, I just got the Jim Cornette business. <laughs> it's, it's easier. Really. It's, it's much less stressful because all I have to worry about is me. And all, I don't have to worry that I'm not going to show up for myself or that I'm going to hold myself up for more money or that I'm not going to execute uh, being myself to the fullest extent that I possibly could. <laughs> I don't have to uh, herd cats, uh, uh, find wild Indian wrestlers and pair them together in interesting matchups for the public or produce television programs involving these same uh, wild, untamed wrestling uh, folks. Uh, I just got to worry about me and doing what I enjoy doing, uh, whether it be Wrestling Legend Fan Fest where I get to hang out with my old cohorts and, and talk to the fans, or it, whether it be comic conventions where I'm such a a, uh, a geek and a nerd uh, myself and an old-time comic collector. I've been doing some business in, in comic books over the past few years as well as some of these festivals uh, and, and, and conventions. Um, or you know, or whether it's a wrestling event like at uh, Peach State in Carrollton, where uh, probably about ten times a year now, maybe I guess I will be at an event where there are actual wrestling matches taking place. <laughs> and generally, it's to either be the general manager, as I will be coming up at Wrestlecade over in Winston Salem, North Carolina, Thanksgiving weekend with uh, uh, Tim Woody and 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 Tracy Myers and and Auto Max and uh, the. 15 million sponsors they got over there. We had like 2,000 people last Thanksgiving weekend out there. Uh, but it, I, I'll be the general manager there. Or it, once again, with uh, you know, with Mr. Getz having been an issue in Tyson Dean's you know life, uh, I'm cranky enough and grumpy enough and still carry a tennis racket that that may or may not be loaded. We we've never really solved the, no, we the, never the final mystery on that. It's like Al Capone's vault that time that Geraldo went into. I really don't believe we got to the whole mystery there. But anyway, whether it's something like that, uh, I'm I'm Jim Cornette, and folks enjoy, apparently, uh, you know, they enjoy uh, also hanging out with me, and, and with the Q&As are very lively, and my, my podcast elicits uh, strong feelings one way or the other, much like having you know the, some of these German videos where you, you, they have their balls nailed to a step stool. They elicit strong feelings, and some people enjoy that type of thing. Uh, it's that sort of like what what you get when you come out to see Jim Cornette, folks. So it's it's really it's it, it's fun for the whole whole family as long as it's the Adams family and you're all over eighteen. Shane Knowles, come on board. Jim, I'm curious. The uh, current Peach State Wrestling Alliance champion is a former uh, Ring of Honor and TNA talent, Jimmy Ray, who's uh, experienced quite the career resurgence over the last 16 months, not only with Peach State, but across the board in independent wrestling. Just curious your thoughts if your path ever crossed with Jimmy during your time at Ring of Honor and TNA. Uh, yeah, well, in, in TNA, definitely it was a longer period of time. I think that at Ring of Honor, yes, in a few cases. But uh, in TNA, he was there for a, a good little stretch while I was there. And, you know, the thing about Jimmy, and I think it, it's been overlooked in a lot of cases, is he's always been, you always hear a lot about Jimmy from the people who see him live, from the folks in Georgia and the folks in the southeast there who see him live. You, uh, he always gets over with the people who see him live. Uh, and I think that's because he works his ass off, and, and he's taking a lot of time with it. And 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 he, he you know, he builds his fan base uh, every time that he goes out there and, and performs, and people get off on it. So I'm looking forward to seeing his uh, his match, which I am not scheduled to be involved in in any way, shape, or form. But then again, these things. What, what do they say? Uh, cards subject to change these days. Is that what the what Amen. the uh, what the kids say, so you, you never know what might happen. But, yes, I've been a fan of Jimmy's work. Now, Shane, if I could, while I've got everything on the brain, let's go ahead and put this together for this coming Saturday night. Uh, Mr. Cornett's Q&A is going to go from what time to what time? Scheduled from 5 o'clock Eastern until 7 o'clock Eastern. The door's opening at 7.30 if you're just there for the wrestling matches with the bell time scheduled at 8 o'clock. Okay. Now, for the Q&A itself, how much are the tickets going to be? 
tickets are separately $10 a piece for the Jim Cornette experience as well as the wrestling matches. However, if you wanted the combo deal, you could get in for $16 to both. And considering that our kids' ticket price is $6, that gets you into the wrestling for a kid's price, even as an adult, if you chose to take the entire package. Now, well, there you go. And then also, you know, I mentioned 18 and under. I'll just, I'll use... I'll, I'll use fewer F words so you can bring little Johnny. <laughs> and, and and that way he'll only hear a couple of them, which is probably what he hears at home, usually on a, on a Saturday, probably in the evening, especially after Daddy's had a couple of beers. You never know. But, <laughs> no, I just want to say I, I enjoy the, the hangout. Basically, that's what it is. The Q, VIP Q&A sounds so stuffy. Uh, but uh, what, what we do in these uh, situations is, you guys get to hang out with me for a while. Um, we're we're going to start about 5 o'clock, and uh, the fans get to ask the questions, which I will answer, and we'll have hopefully a lively discussion. And then uh, if anybody wants a cell phone picture or if anybody wants me to autograph something, boom, we'll do that, and I'll take time with each of those folks uh, individually so that they get first crack at me, so to speak. Um, and uh, once again, uh, if... if yeah, the pictures, the the autographs will be free. I will have merchandise that I would I would love if you fell in love with and purchased it and took it home. <laughs> I'll have my books there, <laughs> nevertheless, that we were discussing. But uh, uh, otherwise, in that boom, and then that's when the regular. Fo- well, we shouldn't say the regular folks. The other fine folks that have just chosen to come to the matches can then get in there. Boom. And 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 once again, I'll be glad to shake your hands quickly as I, as I'm as I'm ushered back for the evening. <laughs> now, I think that that would probably that's that's the way we'll phrase all that. Do you know? And I can go ahead. I was going to say I can vouch for his vendor table, folks. Being at the Mid Atlantic Wrestling Fan Fest that Greg Price puts on, there is some true one of a kind collectibles you're not going to find anywhere else except the coins table. Well, yes, and we, and we and we do try to we we put people in fine late model merchandise and memorabilia for their for their viewing pleasure. I love, I've never heard it said like that before. Thank you. That's a new one. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, the the new books are in a Tuesday night at the gardens. Uh, the books are in, even though they do not go on sale on my website until November twelfth. So technically, in Carrollton will be the first place. That the the brand new uh, one and a half years eighteen months that what works out to be in the in the waiting uh, books are 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 going to be available. They're going to be on sale in Carrollton first. There you have it. Now, I do want to throw one little curveball at you. Oh, geez, here we go. Now he's going to change the deal on the air with me. No, 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 no. Knowing what different people say at different times in different venues, and I'm sure you've heard so much of it. What is the one piece of <clears throat> information that people put out there about you that you wish they would finally get right? Oh, that they would finally get right, that it was not my fault at the window at Dairy Queen. That if you go back and listen, if you read, see, there's clues out there. It's like that, it's like that movie with, who was it? Was it Tom Hanks? I can't remember. He was searching for National Treasure. It was Nicolas Cage. He was searching for his Action Comics number one, whatever the case. Some comic book nerds got that one. Anyway, <laughs> um, it was Chris Jericho's fault. If you go back and you read Jericho's book, he all but admits it. He, he 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 didn't have the video camera in the back. He was instigating things. My ring announcer, Ron Head, the guy from California, very good friend of my 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 lovely wife Stacy's, uh, had moved out here to be be an OVW ring announcer at the time. Had been ring announcing in Smoky Mountain Wrestling there. He had the video camera. Jericho was egging it on, and people to this day think that I was rude to that no good, pimply faced woman. At that Dairy Queen window, and, and it was really Jericho. And if you listen very carefully, when you, when you watch it on YouTube, <laughs> you can hear him doing his, and he, he had just seen Spinal Tap. He was doing his Spinal Tap. What is this, the comedy bus, the taking comedy bus? You can hear him. He, he, he needs to go out. Go ahead and admit it. It was his fault. I challenge him on Twitter. Whatever his Twitter is, people should go out and tell, tell Chris Jericho on Twitter it was your fault wasn't cornet i was within my rights that's what i wish people would get right this saturday november the 7th 
you returned to ringside in one of the main events for this Saturday night's Peach State Wrestling Alliance Super Show. One of the main events. Now, see, now that 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 just goes to show you that if, if what you say is indeed true, then that shows you the the monumental aspect of this card, this lineup here, this night of champions, literally a parade of of top talent up and down the card that I could be involved in a match which would only be described as one of the main events. One half of the main event. <sighs> that said, just once again, it, 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 the magnitude. Well, go ahead, go ahead with, with just one of the main events. You will be representing, managing, advising the reflection of perfection, Tyson Dean, as he takes on Sal Renaro, who will be Mm, advised and escorted to ringside by Al Getz of Al Getz Enterprises. This has been a powder keg waiting to explode. And for everybody who was at the recent PWA live event, you saw that it was this close. And finally, Tyson gets his wish to go one-on-one in a fair and equitable circumstance with Sal Renaro a person who's been running him down up one side and down the other, Al Getz, who has been taking Tyson Dean, a very accomplished champion in a number of different promotions, including Peach State, and referring to him by nothing more than a preliminary wrestler. Coming into this coming Saturday night, not necessarily toward Sal Renaro, but in a battle of wits with Al Getz, what can Mr. Getz expect as the return to ringside of the Louisville slugger, Jim Cornette? I'm, I'm not sure whether that was a question or whether it crossed over into statement and at one point filibuster. However, <laughs> let, me, me. Let, me, let me just say this. See, here's, here's where, see, I have a little advantage on, on Mr. Getz, first of all. That's why I say Getz doesn't get it because, first of all, imagine this. I don't really care whether Tyson Dean wins, loses, or turns blue in this match. See, that is not my problem. What it is, The person that I have made this arrangement with, that's their situation. They say that Tyson Dean needs somebody to keep things even and get, get this gets out of the picture so that he can get what he wants fair and square. That's all I have to know. I'm kind of like one of the, in a Tarantino movie, I'm like one of the hitmen. I have no personal relationship with anybody in this match. I don't care about Mr. Renaro. I don't care whether he turns blue or drops dead. I don't care whether him and Tyson Dean, either one, catch on fire. My job is simply to neutralize by, and I don't want to sound, you know, really nasty or militant here, by whatever means necessary, my job is to neutralize Mr. Getz. So that whatever he does is completely and utterly ineffectual in the outcome of this contest, of which I don't give a flying shit. Right? <laughs> okay. So that means that I can't be bought off because I'm already coming in and getting paid for this. <laughs> I'm getting paid for somebody to be fair and square and legal and down the middle and neutralize gets and stay out of the way. And that's what's going to happen. Getz is going to be neutralized almost out of the way. And if Renaro wins, fine, that's not my job. And if, if Tyson wins, fine, that's not my job. But Getz, I promise you, if he tries to interfere with me doing my job so I get paid, because I'm probably getting paid more than anybody in this equation to get this done here. So I want to make sure I get it done. If, he, if Getz tries to interfere with me getting paid, he is going to have the longest night of his life. He is going to hope and wish that he could get a new job as a guy walking through hell with gasoline fucking britches on rather than, than, than the job that he has, which will be being on the wrong side of me. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, yes, definitely. Oh, by the way, you're going to laugh when I say this because I'm going to go ahead and say this on air as well as off. I immediately thought of you watching Avengers Age of Ultron. Because, no, 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 no. When, when Thor was making a reference to, um, when he was talking, speaking with the vision inside the cathedral, and he was making a reference to the hammer being well balanced, and if it wasn't, it would affect the swing, I immediately thought of Jim Cornette and the tennis racket when it came to that. Well, there you have it, because like Thor's hammer, Jim Cornette's tennis racket will be coming with Jim Cornette. I never leave home without it. So uh, if, if, uh, if, you know, J.J. Dillon said this a long time ago about me and a little feud we had in Philadelphia. He said, Cornette, you're the first tennis player I've ever seen with no balls. 
Dope! <laughs>